Okay, so here we are. We're here for the fifth edition of Facebook Live with Jim himself. How are you, Jim? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Doing well. Big, big day for everyone today with the franchising um, oh, yeah. <laughs> inquiry finally dropping. So um, we'll talk more about that later. We've got a question or two. I've been um, reading that one. That's sad news. Yeah, so we'll get your comments and thoughts on that as we go into it. But I welcome to everyone and thanks for tuning in. If you've got a question, comment, let us know you're here. Drop us a like. Put a question into the feed or any comment, we'll get onto them. Um, same thing as last time. It'll be half an hour sort of Q&A. The more questions you put in there, the more we can hang around. I've got some here prepared and that were given to us earlier um, via various channels. So I'll start with them first and let's get straight into it. So the first, one of the ones from last week was a guy from, was from a guy called Muzz Olmez via Facebook. And he basically said, hey, Jim, we've established you love your history. Mm. Which is your favourite era and why? Uh, classical Greece, no doubt at all. The, the late 5th to the early 4th century BC, it was a time of incredible creativity, the greatest the world's ever known. Um, you know, tremendous in things like history, philosophy, architecture, art, every way an amazing, even... even um, their pottery they made was absolutely amazing, the, the, the black figure vases and so forth. So the, I love that period. And one of the things that's always fascinated me is is why why that particular period, those few tens of thousands of men, especially in, in Athens, were so incredibly creative. And that, that's something that, that intrigued me as, as a teenager. And, and I, I never ceased to wonder about that, to work out why. I think I have a sort of an idea now why it happened. There was a epigenetic change in the population which was very short term but uh yes i love greece still love greece i was just listening again to my um talking book about the peloponnesian wars of the late fifth century I, I love it what do you think happened to them now then because obviously greece is a far cry from well that's the point the, the, yeah. it, it's a certain kind of character that that is that creates genius which is a combination of flexibility and incredible passion, hard work, interest in the subject. As Einstein said, people, people have this very foolish idea about genius. They think it's all about high intelligence. But Einstein himself said that uh, genius is an infinite capacity for taking pains. It, it's, it's got a lot more to do with the effort. And, and, and people who are obsessed by a subject, like um, Isaac Newton, they were bright enough, but they, 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 they weren't unusual. They weren't superhuman. They just had this this focus on what they were doing and they were so interested in it. They just studied and thought and thought and thought and obsessed about it. We know people mostly don't do. And that's, that's what genius is about. That plus flexibility. And, and I think actually from the research that we've done, we could figure out how to create that in individuals. If we can work out the epigenetic settings involved, we can actually, people who want to be actually to become a genius in a sense, we can actually help them to change their character in a way it's fundamentally that makes them that gives them this kind of ability so there you go Mars. there's a pretty elaborate answer but the answer is grace uh was it 10th was it 10th bc what was it sorry 10th. late late fifth late fifth early fourth century that's the time of people like socrates plato yeah. phidias all the, the great names uh, um, thucydides those kind of people so there you go Mars. Um, Jim's Mining Bay of Plenty is Hawks Bay. He says, evening chaps. So hello to Jim's Mining Bay of Plenty, Hawks Bay. Thanks for tuning in. If you are watching, drop us a like or a comment. We will get to it or a question. Um, you know, especially with today with the franchising inquiry findings dropping as well. That'd be really timely as well. Yeah. Um, let's get going to some more questions here. So Scott Manton via Facebook submitted a question saying, has there or is there any plan to have a booking style app release? Sorry, what, what does that mean? Booking so for customers, app. so if customers want to book a job. So we do have a customer style app at the moment, which is integrated with the websites and stuff like that. Yes, yeah, so, we are working on that. Yeah, so, we're going to have a, you know, actually you know more about it than I would really. Yeah, so the answer is basically, Scott, if, if you look at the data with, with apps and how people download them, if it's not a social app, it's really not worth doing really, to be honest, besides mm -hmm. the say out of an Uber or something like that. So what they're, they're called is PWAs, progressive web apps. Now, basically they act and everything like an app, um, the same type of functionality, but they're just based within a website. So we're creating a new form to go onto all the gym's websites, which is integrated into them, which is a lot easier and acts the same sort of way. But in regards to separate creation of an app where people have to download it from App Store and stuff, it's the data that probably doesn't indicate it's, re it's really that viable to do. Um, hopefully that answers your question. 
Um, the next one here, Charlie Jackson via Facebook has gone, what book is Jim reading at this time? And also, what is your favourite book of all time? Um, the book I'm, I say I'm not reading, I'm listening to it, it's called Zucked. It's about Facebook and all the terrible things. It's called what, Zucked? Zucked, Z-U-C-K-E-D. Right. Yeah, and it's about how how Facebook manipulates people and and feeds extreme views. Now the Russians used it to upset the American election yes. and stuff. So yes. the, the power of social media, which is interesting. I don't use Facebook myself, so I'm not too familiar. But it's 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 very interesting stuff and quite disturbing as to what they're doing and how they're doing it and the way they manipulate people's attention to get people to constantly come back and like 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 retweeting the, the feeding the most uh, emotionally charged. Um, News feeds because they, they figure out what people think people are interested in and, and just all the algorithms and how it works. It's very interesting. Best book of all time. Oh my goodness, uh, there's so many. I love um, A Fair Walter Arms by Greg Clark. It's about the uh, changes in character in England that gave rise to, to the Industrial Revolution. I, mean, I think you made a great point. Um, Guns, Germs, and Steel by Jared Diamond is a is a wonderful book, wonderful about, about why civilization arises in certain areas and not others. Um, there's so many. Um, uh, by history, the Planet Four of the West, one of my yes. favourite books. I happen to write it, but yes, uh, I think it's true. I think it's a great book. It's true. I'm trying to look around for a copy here. Yeah. Um, yeah, you can actually get that on um, was it biohistory.org is the website, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. Or yeah. It's, it's available on Amazon as a download, very cheap. We we don't charge too much for it. So yes. It's, it's done okay. I think I think one day we're gonna when we can prove the science and when we can show that the the kinds of treatments and things that are implicated. They're implied as possible from this book that will probably get a bit more attention. But right now it's 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 had some attention. Yeah. We'd, we'd if, like more. if you go to gyms.net, there's actually, if you go to the um, Meet Jim section, the books are there. So um, his mm. own book, um, this one here, which you can obviously, which you can download for free. And you can also get the biohistory, the, um, the non-academic or the more easy to digest version. You can also download that from there as well. Mm. So definitely check that out if you like that sort of stuff. Um, I, don't know, I don't know if you know this, but Facebook was down today. It was a massive story worldwide so facebook in the part of the world plus yeah. instagram was i heard that was down for a lot significant amount of time today. and there was even problems with gmail too so there was with gmail but people were calling the ses and stuff as well to the police reporting and making complaints and all this sort of stuff yeah. so there had to be news releases saying please don't contact us we are so. so dependent on these things it's 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 amazing actually i don't care about facebook personally but <laughs> uh, gmail going down would be a problem i use it yeah, because yeah, you use Gmail. Everyone else in our here off uses Outlook, but you have the Gmail and you Gmail's have better. Yeah. All right, so we'll keep going down here. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, let me go here. So thanks for tuning in. Um, if you are here, just let us know with a thumbs up or give us a question or a comment. So a few comments are flying through now, so I'll get to a few of them. So Josh Palaya Vizcara is a Jim's Clean franchise all down there. She says hi from Tasmania. Hey, Josh. Hi, Josh. Josh, yeah. Josh, I know, yeah. I know, I know Josh. We've yeah. been in contact a few times, I think. So, Sal, John, last week I had a question. So, Sal, what's that one? Was that the meat one? I can't remember. Maybe that was the one. Um, so, I'll go down here. I'll get it for you, Sal. Um, Sean Lee goes, thanks for the opportunity, Jim. Sean, Dubbo, 2SL10. Hey, Sean. Hey, Sean. He, right, here we go. Sal, John goes, why wouldn't you franchise a retail business? This is pretty good timing, this one. Um. It's a very different kind of operation. People think that we do everything, but in reality, service service businesses are very similar. The mowing, cleaning, computer services, dog wash, they're all the same idea that somebody rings up for a service and we go out and do them. Um, retail franchises are extremely different. There's all to do with things like leases and traffic density and, and people passing by, and then there's you have to have a different form of inspection. You have to have somebody go out and see them. We... we I'm not particularly interested in it. It's a very different skill set from what we've got. So actually, in fact, we do have one retail franchise, which is um, pool care. Yeah. They do have at least one pool shop. Hmm. So, but that's part of the a division, which is basically focused on, on retail, going, going out to customers, I mean. Yeah, so that, hopefully that answers your question there, Sal. So. Mm -hmm. one, one of the lessons about business that I've found is that you, you should do what you're good at. Don't, don't think because you're good at one thing, you're going to be good at something else. That's a bad mistake. Um, we're service franchising is something that we are, I think, particularly good at. And we, we can do a lot better, of course, but we know that area very well. Retail franchises is very different. And I, and I certainly think that something like fast food is an incredibly different area. 
It is. So I just that's probably good timing into going to this one, which is from Craig Pritchard via Facebook's gone. Hi Jim, what are your thoughts on the recent franchise inquiry report, which I know you've done some submissions for and stuff like that? I've been going through it this afternoon. And it's a very depressing read. It's it's basically, in my view, it's a whitewash. What they've done is they've got this immensely complicated legal structure with all these massive disclosures, and, and they want to make it bigger. But most franchisees, certainly Jim's franchisees, but I really think that most franchisees in general are not people with 20 years of legal experience. They just don't understand these things. And you add more and more complexity and 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 all kinds of disclosures and things. It just makes it so complicated. What I've said every disclose every um, inquiry, including this one, I said, you ought to do basically what we do. Every year, you should go to the franchisors and get a complete list of franchisees. And at the franchisors' expense, not the franchisees, you survey the franchisees and you ask them some basic questions like, how quickly does your franchisor get back to you? How do you rate your income? You know, good, okay, poor. Um, how often do you have meetings? Um, how helpful is your franchisor? Just basic, simple questions which take about five minutes to answer. And if that was done and you put, made it sure that every person who's inquired about a franchise has to be told that information up front, that would really do so much. It would do a hundred times more than all these codes and everything else because people who not doing a good job, people would want to join them. Why would you join a French, an organization? You know, the 90% of franchisees in Pizza Hut went to court against their franchisor. 90% took legal action to try and, and deal with problems that they had. What, why, would you, why would you join a system where 90% of the franchisees are suing their franchisor? It's a shocker. In fact, not only would I say that we should, we should um, every franchisee should be contacted once a year and have that published, but I would think that what they should do is what we've done in gyms, which is we give the franchisees the right to vote out their franchisors. Now, within gyms, every franchisee, if, if, a, if a majority of franchisees in a region are not happy with their franchisor, they can vote them out. Same with our divisionals, including myself, by the way. If the majority of franchisors in the division are not happy with the divisional franchisor, they can vote them out. Then there's a process, they get three months of warning, they get a chance to do it. And then if the vote out is successful, the franchisor can sell their business. But imagine if you did this for Pizza Hut or Domino's or any of those, that the, the franchisees could actually vote out the franchisors not doing their job. They have to look after their franchisees. Now that's radical. As far as I know, we're the only franchise system in the world that does this. But my goodness, what a difference it would make. If people are in a franchise, surely they're in it because the franchisor is going to look after them. If they're not looking after them, if they're screwing them into the ground, if they're ripping them off blind, why do they deserve to be a franchise or what are they what are they offering? I, I would I would that's what I would say and I, I know it'll never happen because everything's run for lawyers and financial advisors. I know, I know that you're doing an interview tomorrow I think with ABC regarding this as well. Yeah, I, so, I actually said yeah. to a notice I, I said to the I said to her today I said all right the franchisees have been sold down the river again and, and it's just it's a shocker. What, what they're doing. It's, it's awful. You know the disclosure document that, that we have to put out? My previous franchising lawyer, who's been in the franchising industry for the best part of a decade, said she struggled to understand it. Now, she's an inside a franchising lawyer. She finds it hard to understand. How on earth can a typical person who wants to buy a franchise, whether it's Jim's or whether it's Hungry Jack's or KFC or whatever it is, how can they understand this stuff? It's so complicated. And all they do is make it more and more and more complicated. And then if the franchisee wants to take action, they've got to go to the ACCC. They've got to take legal action to them, which is incredibly expensive against a well-heeled opponent, far more experienced than them. It's, it's a shocker. What's going on is just criminal. And, and, and I, I am disgusted and angry that the, the government does so little. Well, now, I, I have to say, to be, to be fair, there is some self-interest in this because I believe that if people compared franchise systems fairly based on what the franchisees say, we tend to do pretty well. But at the same time, if somebody does a better job, then join that franchise. The one that should, looks after you the best is the one you should join. Franchisees should come first. And that's why in, in, our logo is, our, our slogan is, 
the first priority is the welfare of franchisees. Every time anybody who knows there who's got an email from me, any of our franchisees, would know it's on the top of my bottom of my email. Our first priority is the welfare of our franchisees. We are also passionate about customer service. We sign any franchisees and franchisors we are convinced will succeed, but franchisees come first. Now, if the government was to take that very radical attitude, then you'd see something happening. So there's a good answer. There's probably a snippet of what you're going to talk about tomorrow, I guess, on the ABC, so keep an eye out for that. Um, mm -hmm. I just want to touch on further on that because what I think is an interesting one when I looked at it was the um, all those ones that had the, main compl the most complaints about them were all part of publicly listed entities. Now, what people don't realise is if you're a publicly listed entity, your number one duty if you're on the board is to the shareholder. It's not to the franchisee. So they try and obviously monetize as much as they can for shareholder returns because that's their priority. The franchisee is never the but priority. But isn't, isn't RFG owned by a, um, uh, what do you call it, a private literate group like a... RFG? Yeah. No, I think they're public. No, oh, they're public. Yeah, yeah, they're public. Domino's is the same. It's the same thing. Well, they're all part of, they're all part of the yeah, same thing. Yeah, but they're all publicly listed. So the, number one, so the board's duties on those things is to the shareholder. It's not to the franchisee. Which, but which but, but even if you had a, a private equity company take them over, they, it's not the same issue because what they would want to do is to cut the costs Correct. and increase the revenue yes. and then flow them off for a big profit. So you've got the same issue. The thing about – there's so many things that you could do in franchising. And I know this is a franchisor. There's so many things you can do short-term to improve your situation. You know, we had a franchisor just this week um, approach us because he's, he's getting – the fees are too hard. He's, he's, he's not able to – make a go of it and we had a look at his situation and we just put his fees way down we knocked them about down by about one third okay in western australia All right so you know because i don't want the guy to fail and, and also because reputation is important we don't want people to feel that they're getting a bad deal from us so you've got to take decisions that are going to hurt you in the short term because they're good in the long term but these companies only think short term and it's it's shocking what goes on i feel so sorry Particularly people who, who invest in things like dominoes and stuff and they have to sell a pizza below cost mm. and then they've got to pay a percentage to the franchisor who doesn't give a stuff how much money they make because all they care about is the turnover. It's it's awful. And then having to buy stuff at double the, the cost you can buy it from in Coles mm. and it's 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 evil in the extreme and, and I just don't think the government it's, I didn't expect to do anything proper about it, but it just is very discouraging to see how little they care about the interests of the poor battlers who are buying these franchises. I completely agree. I'll just come. So thanks to everyone for tuning in. There's a few tuning in now. So let us know you're here with a comment or a question or a like. Um, we will try and get to your question as well if you post it here. I'll just run through down here. So we've got Zaniz Wong. Hopefully I pronounced that right. Saying here. So thanks for letting us know. Hayda Hussein. Mr. Hayda Hussein, the Kings uh, Cleaning Group. He's gone hello, gents. So hello, Hayda. Thanks for tuning in again. Stuart Rainbow's gone. Hi, Jim and Joel, all tuned in here. Hi, Stuart, how are you going? Hey, Stuart. Zaniz Wong has then got a question here. How do you ensure that all of Jim's franchises have the same quality? Well, they don't. In, in terms of quality, in terms of, of work, they do, absolutely do not. Most of our franchisees score 4.6 and above in a star rating, which is very rigorous rating. But we've got franchisees that are scoring in the threes, and that's really bad. And, and that's how we have a whole system of compliance and... and and warning letters and breach mm. notices and all kinds of pressures on them to do better. And, and as time goes by, as the ratings become more important, that's going to become even more so. So, but we know too, I mean, we've got the system called um, Go Blitz, probably about to be renamed Jim's Plus, where we, we, we give our unserviced leads to independent operators. And we know that the, the chance of an independent operator getting a... Um, one or two star rating is about two and a half times more than the gym's person because our people are selected and they're trained and they're and they're pushed. But even even with us, you know, it's still I think it was about uh, seven percent of our surveys showed up as um, one and two star ratings. Mm -hmm. um, I think nine percent of surveys were were too expensive and the rest were um, actually one, two, and three and the rest were four and five. So the great majority of our franchises do do good work, but there's some that don't, and that's an issue. That's a good answer there. So I'll just tune down a few of these people letting us know they're here. So thank you for tuning in again and leaving a comment. So Lana Sadowski's gone hi, Jim and Joel. Ron Sadowski here. Oh, Ron and Alana. They're our uh, longest, yeah. longest franchisors. They've been in the system since nearly, nearly 30 years now. Very, very long time. Um, Darcy Cone Varal says, Jimmy did a great interview with Koshi and Sam on Sunrise last week. Thanks, Thanks. for that. Yeah. That's very nice. Ia Pemmons joined your Oh, hi, Ia. Yeah. How's your job going? 
I bet she can't. You Hopefully, can't. well, yes, yeah, she can't reply. Well, she can listen on the comments, I guess. That, that's my daughter-in-law. Yeah, and Tom's apparently found a job too, which is good. So uh, Jim's memeing is tuned in once again. Hey, Jim and Joel, the other Jim here. Yes, you are here. Jim's memeing. Keep doing the right stuff. Keep doing the work well with your work. Sean Daly's gone future of Jim's scaffolding here. So hello, Sean. Um, is it have his uh, half half is Zula watching Jim? Half is Zula. I can't. Sorry, pronounce mispronouncing your mm -hmm. name. Okay. Half well, Sula or Half oh, Sula watching Jim. All right, here's a cheeky question. I don't know if you might know this band. Sean Daly's gone. Hey, Jimmy, you're going to go to the Metallica concert. <laughs> well, I'm going, Sean. I can tell you that right now. So the only time I like loud, noisy, loud concerts is in church. That's that's, <laughs> that's, that's my version of a, of a rock concert. I there's a lot of rock. I think there's yeah. a lot of those Hillsong Christiany rock things, and they try and. Well, my church that. is pretty lively. I go to a charismatic church not far from here, and so we we get pretty excited. And, Jumping down and wave her hands in the air and this kind of stuff too, and speak in tongues. It's it's it's, it's fun. It's quite fun. I, I love my church, but that's good enough. Metallica, I don't need. Oh, I need Metallica, so I'll definitely be going. Sean, see you there. Um, Ali Olmes is tuned in and gone. Hi guys. Hi Ali. Thanks for tuning in, Ali. Fran Neil. Hi Jim and Joel. Hi Fran. Thanks for tuning in. Um, Denise, is it Zingini or Zing? Sorry for mispronouncing your name, Denise. Hi from the call center late shift, so she's over in the call center watching. How are you going? That don't neglect the clients. Make sure you <laughs> grab the phone as soon as it comes on. Make sure they got the ticket. So um, Jason Pollock's tuning in and gone higher from Jim's Pool Care Umina. Love the live videos, Jim. A lot of knowledge in them. Mm, good. Thanks for that feedback. We're going to do a lot more videos too, um, this guy's. Yeah, we're going to do a lot more content. Um, we've got a lot, but um, we're hoping to do a lot more interesting content. Fran Neal, hi, Jim and Joel. Doug and Fran Neal tuned in and enjoying the conversation. Keep it up. Thank you very much for that comment. Um, okay, here is an interesting one. Darcy Cohen Burrell, are you doing the gyms live from the gyms head office and what state is the gyms head office in? Yeah, this is our head office here. You can see all around you. It, it's um, in Victoria. We're in Murrubak, which is eastern suburbs of Melbourne. Yeah, right next to your um, place of residence as well. So yeah, this, this is, this is um, Joel sitting at his own desk. This is my desk, fact. yeah. It but is. Behind that, we've got just over there, we've got the... Um, admin staff who do the contracts and compliance and stuff and then there's sales and people back over there and everything yeah, yeah it's right in the middle of the office office um, this is a hive of hive of activity in, in working out it's so, so noisy people have to walk out to have a phone conversation but it's very it's fun it definitely is um okay so zinez wong has gone my experience with jim's building inspection was superbly good but with jim's electrical really letting me down hopefully Ouch. the compliance can help so, well we're we're sorry to hear that um i know jim's very strict on the complaints so um, you have to let us know what happened or emails if, or messages. If there's, a, if there's a genuine issue, like if you've been overcharged or a job's not done properly or something, you can um, let me know, just jim at jims.net. There's, there's a standard rule that the all the call centre knows that if a complaint isn't dealt with properly the first time, because the first time it goes to the franchisee and the franchisor, and usually they will deal with it, but if they don't, the second time they come through, they go straight to me with an email address and I will sit on it till it's fixed. Now, that doesn't mean to say we always, sometimes clients aren't fair or reasonable, but most of the time we'll just make sure it's, it's done right. And that could be anything. It could be refunding the client. It could be doing the job all over again. It could be anything. And, and you know, we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars a year fixing up jobs where the franchise is left. There's a warranty fund that does it. So Denise will look after you. If you've got a genuine case, you, you, you come to Jim's, you're safe. Yeah, so that's, as Jim just gave you his um, uh, email as well, jim at jims.net is in this. So just flick us through whatever your experience was and we can look into it and um, Jim will hopefully sort it out for you. So yeah, just, just give me your yeah. address so I know what job you're talking about. Yeah, so, so email it through in a private email. It should be fine. Um, what we'll go through, we'll just run down through. So there's a few people tuning in now, so thanks for tuning in. As I said, leave us a comment question or some sort of like to let us know you're here and we'll get to it as many as you can. Has to, can be about anything as well for questions. We've heard a bit of talk about the franchising inquiry, so... If you want to ask some more stuff about that um, or anything else, just pop into the comments and we'll try and get to it. I've got a few more here. Um, okay, so this is a fun, this is a funny one. This is probably a bit more different. He goes, Elizabeth Baggers via Facebook. Now, this is on behalf of her partner, Luke Green, who doesn't have um, Facebook. I know Luke Green personally, so it's quite mm -hmm. funny. He's asking a question about a mower because he would never have pushed a mower in his life. He's a real blue blood, blood from Warnable. Oi, Jim, what you reckon is the might? He goes, oi, Jim. What do you reckon? Is the mighty Victor still the best lawnmower or do you reckon it's those Hondas that go now? Uh, for a professional, Hondas have got the best reputation. I think most of our guys use them. They're just more reliable. I mean, I used to use um, Briggs & Stratton like Massports in the past and uh, 
what I tended to find is is that with the with those engines, you'd you'd wear out the motor and throw it open a new motor on. But when you have a Honda mower, you might have to throw out the mower and keep the, the the engine. They're just that much more reliable. Now, having said that, that's for a professional. Um, frankly, when I mow my own lawns up at my farm, I um, which is just around the house, I use a um, uh, AEG one, a um, battery powered, because it's 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 quiet and it's very low maintenance. But that you know, it it takes me about three batteries to mow my farm, so <laughs> so you, you wouldn't use it. Not not many of our people use them for the job. But they're very reliable and they're quiet and, and they don't have a lot of vibration and just just nice to use. So there you go, Luke. You never have a push and mower, so um, but Tim's answered that question if you do decide to have a push and mower one day. Um, Joshua Elms has tuned in. He's on Hi Jim, thanks. Hi Josh. Sean Daly's gone Metallica question, which concert? Well, it'll be the one at the um, Marvel Stadium down here in Melbourne. So it'll be the one at Eddie Had Stadium, which it was previously called. Um, I think that's in October. Um, he's gone, should do Jim's concerts. Well, I guess there could be Jim's <laughs> events or something, I guess. Yeah, probably not, though. Because <laughs> uh, the thing is, we, we can give a lot of help with what we do. It, it is a, it is a, it's a false, it's a, it's a common mistake to think because you're good at one thing, you're good at something else. We tried launching a trade exchange some years back, and it really didn't work very well at all. Um, running a factory, we lost a lot of money, too. Then my wife's taken that over now, and it's working quite well. That's to make trailers and things. It's, it's very difficult. To, to learn a new field. That, that's why it's always easier to, to expand what you're doing, to get better at what you're doing, to, to put a new division on, to open up in a new state, those kinds of things. I, I, I'm not tempted to go into areas, you know, you, you get an illusion that you're somehow some business genius, which is just not true. <laughs> so Zeniz has gone, thanks. So yes, Jim will sort it out. Um, Paul Sanders has gone, the new book was a great read, Jim, thanks. Oh, thanks, Paul. Glad yeah. to hear you read it. Certainly, uh, Certainly a lot of stuff in there that surprised me too. <laughs> I didn't know a lot of what was going yeah. on. John Adai, uh, Johnny Dema, I think he's a cleaning franchisee. He's gone, hi, guys. Hi, John. Hi, John. Uh, Toby Spatieri has gone, what, what is your advice for Jim's franchisees wanting to build up their client list? I'll just give great service. I mean, I mean, it, it's pretty simple. It's uh, when somebody calls you, you give back a you, – you, you call back blindingly fast. I was talking with one franchisee earlier this week and, and he's – He's got an amazing record. He's just got like a 94% conversion, despite not being cheap and, and, and making great money and building up. He's, he's been going like a month and he's talking, putting on a worker. But he, he makes a game of seeing how fast he can get the client back. It's like, it's like he, he rings back so fast and the client just says, oh, wow, that was fast. I just, I just hang up the phone from the office. He, he just does it right hitting it hard. And just, just brilliant service. He, he, if he sees he's going to turn up, he gets there. He presents well, doesn't charge cheap. He's, he's a great operator, but it's exciting. I said, you keep in touch with me. I want you to know you're a potential franchise all there. This is after one month. He's so good. Well, it doesn't seem to be nothing really out of the ordinary, does it? The ones who are really good. No, it's just the it, basics really well, isn't it? No, it doesn't It yeah. doesn't at all. It's just doing the, the simple things. As I say to people, you know, the basic stuff is, is getting back to clients fast, turning up when you say you will, wearing a uniform with proper vehicle signage. I mean, my nine-year-old could do that, and yet it's so sad to see people fail and lose their business and disappoint and let down their family and blow their investment because they can't do what a nine-year-old can do. It's, it's tragic. I never cease to be amazed by it and upset by it. But no matter what, I mean, you know, how, how do we know that somebody will not do it? Most of our franchises are fine. You know, we have 90% would, would be still there after their first year. And of that 10%, not all have failed. Some of them just decide to do something else. But some people do fail, and it's it's very sad. And, and 10% of our franchises are poor, poor income too, which is pretty sad. But, as I often say, they're not evenly distributed. The franchisees who are the best in terms of customer service is like 3%, but those who are the worst in terms of customer service is 25%. So it's really simple, great service. And, you know, you've got to learn to be efficient and get through the jobs. I was talking to a franchisee mowing guy this week, and uh, he was taking an hour to mow a lawn. And I said, well, obviously, because he had great, great, he's got about 4.8 star rating, so he's obviously doing great work and there's no complaints. But seriously, you can mow an edge of typical lawn in 35 minutes. I should know. I used to do it. And I used to do 12 lawns a day, typically, without really killing myself. So there's got to be reasons why he's not making the income that he should. Hmm. 
So I'll just run through a couple more here. So Darcy's gone. What about Jim's nurse, a uh, Jim's nursing home or Jim's home care? I think we've touched on this one a couple of times, but yeah, Jim's Jim's home yeah. care definitely. That means somebody going out to somebody's home. The only issue with this is like anything else, you've got to show me a model that somebody can make sixty bucks an hour. Yeah, they're not going to work for forty eight dollars an hour, or whatever the government pays. I'm not going to do a franchise where a person can't make a decent living. Sixty bucks an hour is the absolute minimum that I would want any of my franchisees to work for. If I can't see that, I won't do it. Nursing homes is a very different business. That's that's a, mm. I wouldn't want to get into that, not at all. So anything like some mobile going to the person, that's the type, yeah. of, the type of business. So John Adema has a Jim's Cleaning franchisee. I'll go through here. He's got a good question. He goes, question which might be a bit curly. Are you an advocate for providing services to NDIS clients? Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, it, it, they can be very good, actually. Uh, I was Again, this, just this last week, I was talking with a franchisee who does it very well, but he's got a way of doing it that he gets his hourly rate proper. He doesn't work for the 48 bucks an hour. Um, he just he just manages it in a way, and he says they're tremendous because they're, they're also, they're year round, they're, so you don't have a drop off in winter time. It's the same every month of the year. It's very regular income, it's very steady. Um, he loves it, and, and he's, he's making himself like 80 bucks an hour doing it. But that's the, the crucial thing. You've got to work out how to get a proper hourly rate. It's not worth being in business mm -hmm. if you're only making 48 bucks an hour. It's just not in there. We, we want our franchisees to be making, you know, 100 grand a year type incomes. That's that's the kind of the standard. So hope that answers your question, John. Mm -hmm. um, thanks to everyone for tuning in at the moment. Let us know you're here with a like or with a comment or with some sort of engagement with the question. We'll try and get through a couple more. I've got one here all the way from Canada, from a main franchisee in Canada. And it's a pretty good question. It's a pretty mm -hmm. poignant one, actually. Who's, who's that? It's Matt Bagley. Okay, Matt. Yeah. I, I, I know, I know. So via Facebook, he's gone, I want to hear what's new with Jim's jobs. We have used it since day one, but it's getting dated. Since yeah. Jimbo app come and go, then formatize. Please, 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 let's get a newer version out of Jim's jobs with some updates like batch invoicing via email. If no email on the account, it will print instead. Also, some other ways to print reports on your services for clients. Yeah, okay. Well, look, that's a good question. We, we're actually having tried outsourcing the thing to formatize with very poor results. We're actually embarked on a crash program to improve Jim's jobs because it's a very simple program. People like it. We've already worked out a, a, a change to allow people to invoice from the program, which was something they asked for. But we've got a company in India who's rewriting the code, and once that's been done, you have to. It's in a more modern format. Then we're going to be doing everything else. We're going to be um, allowing it to be worked on, used on mobiles, so used on your mobile phone, um, make it, and 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 all the other changes that we want. We're, we're getting a list of different changes, and we're talking to franchisors. So. We have a deal with Formatize that runs out November 1st. So by that date, that's going to be our deadline to have a really good program in place. So once it's there, we'll really work on developing it. But the main the main thing we're concerned about is that it's got to be, it's got to do the things you want, but it's also got to be incredibly simple to use. And Jim's job is like that. It's very simple to use, much more so than Jimbo or Formatize or anything else we've tried. So, yeah, absolutely. And, and it'll be fantastic. And it'll... Look, it'll eventually do more and more. That, that's the aim. It'll, it'll do everything for you. It'll, 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 it'll wipe your kids' nappies. It'll do everything. That's, that's the basic idea to make it better and better. And now we've got this um, technology fee, which is, I don't know how much it is, about 15 bucks a month. Yeah, if it's set up to 17 bucks around that sort of level. Yeah, at the moment it's all going yeah. to formatize, so we don't get much from it. But once November the 1st comes, we're going to be able to really put tremendous resources into this program. And it'll be so good. Yeah, there's been a massive amount of planning in it, and the guys in IT who are mm -hmm. do, they're doing a really proper process, Matt. They're not just rushing into it. So the, the idea is, know. when you get a job on 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 through the phone, you actually it plunks into your diary, and then you just do like that. You click on it, and then you make the phone call, and then you click on another button, and that would send if you don't get through, and that sends a text, and it records the fact that you tried to ring the client. It sends a pre-prepared text to the client. It does things like that. It reminds you if you haven't rung back. It reminds the franchise or if you've forgotten to ring back. It, it's going to do a whole lot of different things. We're not, we're not going to get access to your finances or anything like that. We don't want to do that. But just to help you to run a great business and, and make it simple and make it quick and reduce the number of complaints and just help franchisees to do the right thing. Definitely. A lot, I mean, just to give an example, one of the main problems we have is people complain about, because I go through virtually all complaints every day, franchisees, Clients often complain they haven't gotten a quote. Now, what often happens is the franchisee sends a quote, emails it, and it goes to the spam. It goes to the spam, which is very common. 
and then the, the so the customer complains and they, obviously the franchisee misses out on the job so a very simple thing is when you give email a quote you follow up with a phone call or at least a text now what jim's jobs will do one of these days is when you send a quote it'll actually text the client as well saying just sent you the quote if you've got any quick questions please ring me now, that's a whole raft of complaints and poor, poor surveys and lost jobs that we can save for the franchisee by something as simple as that. So hopefully that answers your question, Matt. And thanks for writing that all the way from Canada. So I'll just run through some comments and questions left here. So Anthony Oswald goes, Jim's building inspections runaway bases from Queensland says, on your Jim, good stuff. Hi, Anthony. John Render, he goes, hi, guys, going well. A month to go before prostate cancer being removed. Get guys to have regular checks done. That's how they found mine, and I'm a healthy and fit guy. Um, we hope you go really well, John, and you're doing we well. Do too. And thanks for commenting on the video. Hope you do everything and okay. We'll, we'll suspend your fees until you're back on, on deck. Yeah, hopefully everything's work, doing well, John. Let Jim know, definitely. Um, Sean Daly's gone, going to the Formula One gym. <laughs> I didn't, did you even know it was on? <laughs> no. Nah. So, um, yeah. Sean, he's not the biggest with the footy and the, the sports. No, sport, there's no. a famous quote in, in the book in, yeah. in which I was driving with um, one guy and, and I said, what's that building over there? He said, that's the MCG. How could you not know that? Oh, I have no idea what the MCG is. <laughs> no, I, I love yeah. being fit. Um, I love playing squash and stuff and running and stuff, but I'm not into sport. Yeah, uh, yeah, not into sport at all. There you go, Sean. Um, Shane Charnstrom. So Shane Char Charnstrom, sorry, is gone. Hey, guys. Can we please have the new Jim's jobs integrate to all the major accounting packages, not just zero? Yeah. Well, I certainly, I certainly, um, um, I think they're looking at doing QuickBooks as well. Uh, I'd say I can't tell. It, with it, well, zero, <laughs> zero is QuickBooks, so it's probably saying there's like MyOB. I know MyOB and Zero are the two real major ones. Oh, the QuickBooks system. It's QuickBooks separate. Is in yes, on our program. Sorry. It's yeah, no, separate. They're, so they're different. Three or four, I reckon. Look, yeah. what I'd say with any change in the system, what you do is you work out priorities and you say, okay, how important is this particular aspect to how many people? So, and also, how long does it take to do? So if it's a, if it's a 10 minute job, then they'll do it very quickly. But if it's a two week job, you got to look at it and say, okay, well, how many people will be affected by this? How many want it? How many are using my op, for example? Um, and how much difference does it make to them? And then here's this other thing that say everybody uses, like bulk email things, so forth, something like that. So you've always got to put your priorities in place. And, and IT is like that. We have a, a massive list in IT for changes to the system, and we're constantly juggling and saying which is the most important. So. A lot of it depends on, on you guys. If we get a lot of requests for something, we'll tend to do it, obviously, more. So I hope that, hope that answers your question, Shane. I'm sure if you flick an email through, you can get a bit more detailed answer as well. I'll just run down some questions in the comments here, which are flooding through now. Hi to everyone tuning in. Thanks for uh, tuning in, leaving a question or comment. We'll try and get to as much as we can real quickly. Dave Cardillo has gone, have you seen all of the Jim's memes? Now, those Jim's memes, that you've seen a few of them come through, I presume. I've seen a few. Yeah. So let you know, Dave. We're Dave. Oh, we're running a um, a competition very soon. We actually have the meme generator or the combat the logo generator created today. Um, they've been asking with that. Jim's meme's all aware of that. Um, he's been very helpful with some suggestions as well. Sean Lee's got a question. Here's an appropriate question. Jim, former time seems to be playing up since we announced we are not going to use it after November. Are they supposed to be supporting us and still till November? Yes. Uh, I've just had an email from Matt um, today about this subject, and he says that we want to provide better support, and they're doing webinars and stuff. And I wrote back to him and said, well, you know, what we want is a better deal. We want a bulk deal for the franchises who want to stay with Formatize after the 1st of November. We want a, a great deal. We don't want to pay commercial rates. This is Jim's guys. Hang on. So if you don't give us a deal, you're going to lose almost everybody because we'll do our best to get them away. If you offer us a reasonable deal, like maybe – equivalent to the, to the technology fee so it doesn't cost our franchise anything, you'll keep a few of them. So come and talk to me. If people like former ties, I'm happy with them to keep it, but I don't want them to pay extra. That, that's my position. But they, but he, he promises me that they're, they're giving great support and everything. He says they've got two people working full-time in support, which is garbage. It isn't. The, the, the feedback I get is that the support is not what it should be, and which is one reason we're we're dumping them. Yeah, so it shouldn't. I'm sorry to hear it's playing up. It shouldn't be playing up to our knowledge. So yeah, yeah. If you if you have issues, just email me Jim at Jim'sTime.net, and I'll put it straight through the map. He, he tends to listen to my to read my emails. He doesn't listen to anything else. 
So Joshua Elms has gone, here's a pretty good question. Is there many mine franchises that don't work on the tools and just manage clients and staff? Thanks, Josh. Yeah, there's a few. Yeah. Not 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 many. The great majority of our guys would be on the tools, but there's surprising number actually who who've got have gone off the tools completely. And that's not to speak, of course, of the franchisors who often come up from the ranks as franchisees and, and now basically manage full time. Mm. But it's pretty good. Like I know a guy in New South Wales, a mowing franchisee there who turns over two million dollars a year and he's got three teams on the road. As far as I know, he doesn't actually work on the tools himself, but he makes very good money. So there you go, jo Joshua. So it can be done. Um, mm. Hayda Hussein's gone training week this week. Which division has the most attending? <laughs> so <it might> be... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You tell me, Hayda. Tomorrow at tomorrow at midday, so there's a big competition actually. Mm. I, I remember one time I, I uh, dog washed it better than cleaning, and I, and I, I sent Hayda an email. I said, Hayda, how does it feel to be number three? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's the only other one or two every time. Yes. So Sean's question is going, what's your next what's your next gym's adventure you personally want to do? So uh, I, I don't know if that's a generic question or that's a venture. I don't know. No, basically the software is, is fantastic. Um, Jim's Jobs is a big priority with us. I think we can do a fantastic program that will be really useful. And the other program that we're really looking forward to, we're getting done right now, is, is a program to help franchisors to do their job. So they can actually just ring their franchises regularly and take notes by dictation and, and remind them to do things like call franchisees back or to follow up complaints and, and just just to make it really easy for them to do their job. Like like a personal secretary. Somebody says, oh, you need to do this call. Here's the, I'll bring, bring the number for you. And you just speak to them. You could, you could do the whole thing hands-free. That's that's the idea. I just saw a um, – Yesterday they showed me they showed me a mock up at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. Like in that meeting. Yeah. It was it, it, it's good. It's quite exciting. You just they called it Americano or something because that's the software, but you just call it up and then you say phone John and then it just props up and there and there you can phone it. Yeah, it's gonna be a really cool tool. Yeah. Um so that's, it, that's yeah. exciting. I think IT is actually the biggest potential for our business right now. We have got an advantage over anybody else in this industry. And I reckon probably in the world of really good software because we can afford to invest in it because of our simple size. How can our competitors with a few hundred franchises, how can they compete with that? And technology is more and more important. So there you go. So Zinez Wang has gone, do you, do you have a platform or do we have a platform to view all the good, not so good reviews from Jim's franchise or Jim's franchisees? Um, if you go to what's currently www.goblitz.com, mm. And you put a job request in, you can actually see the local franchisees there, if, if there are any, of course. And they'll have the star ratings where they can view on the number. All, of, you, can, yeah. you can see the star ratings. You can see the um, reviews. You can see how expensive they are, one, two, or three dollar signs, which gives you an idea of proportion of clients locking them back on price. Um, you can see everything. You can even see how far away they are. See the lot. So, in, in fact, if I wanted to get a franchisee to do a job, I, I mean, gyms are kind of pretty good on the whole, but, but some of them aren't. You know, maybe only one in, you know, one in 20, but you don't want to hit. So I would always go to the system and check the person out first. But you can do this through through this Go Blitz program, which will shortly be called Jim's Plus, because it's Jim's franchisees plus others. So Jamie Byage tuned in. So Jamie's from Jim's Real Estate. So hopefully he's going well, well, saying he's ready for training next week. So Jamie's a trainer um, at our training. Yeah, yeah. So he's very, very, very entertaining, Jamie. He does a good job. That's it. Has to actually because every one of our every one of our, our, our trainers is 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 rated on every session, so it's a very tough job. But if they fall down a bit, we come back to them and say, "Okay, what's going on here? Why did you do so badly?" Um, it's it's quite tense on Monday morning when that comes out. I did a couple of sessions back. I did pretty poorly myself for some reason. I think, "Oh, how did I do so badly?" I even got some people like that was pretty average. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So in gyms, it's generally you. you, you we get very annoyed when it's like this says good. It has, always has to be excellent, right? So we always want the excellent column. So it's very Yeah, the, the rule of thumb is two-thirds excellent, one-third good is okay. Yeah. And if you can do better than that, it's great. If you do less than that, if you get any, you know, okays or pours, we, we're really not too happy about that. So I'll just finish off with two questions here. So thanks for everyone tuning in. Let Give us a like, a comment, or some sort of question we can get to it, hopefully. Um, so Jim's Mamie has gone, are there any areas you'd really like to expand into but currently don't have enough franchisees or zores? Any areas? What do you mean? Entire... 
So he goes, are there any areas, any any other areas you'd really like to expand into but currently don't have enough franchisees or zors? Well, most divisions are like that. Most divisions, we just haven't got enough people to cover the work. I mean, fencing is very bad. Handyman is bad. We've got an enormous overflow in mowing in a lot of areas, cleaning in some areas. I wanted to get a gym's cleaned it myself. Couldn't couldn't get one. There's nobody local. Um, most divisions actually need more franchisees. Hazardous waste. Um, this, this, it's it's an embarrassing situation to be in. But in recent years, there's been more and more work, and we just we're growing, but we just can't grow fast enough to, to cope with the with the demand. That's why we started this whole thing with mm. passing jobs out. So everything. And there's obviously new divisions we'd love to do. Jim's personal training is just starting up, which is exciting because it's something I have a great thing about fitness. Mm. There's, there's some there's wonderful ones. We'd like to be in the medical area. We'd like to do things like um, optometry and, and chiropractic and, and, and physiotherapy and all these ones too. We haven't, we haven't started to go into those areas. The so Jim's maiming definitely sent through some sort of proposal. I know you tune in every yeah. week. And the thing is, appreciate. ideas are, are cheap. The hard thing is to find the right person to run the division. That's correct. That's what's really difficult. So Josh Palea of Vizcara has gone. It has to be cleaning's biggest division for this week. Two from train uh, from Tasmania are coming for training. Wow. Which is really cool. Very good. And Enver uh, Baragwianic, I think he's a member of Jim's Cleaning, he's gone, what is the most profitable franchise division in Jim's group these days? Profitable for who? <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, but that's a good. It's a very, it's a very poignant question. Yeah, if you, I mean, if you look at profitability, then mowing because that's nearly half our franchisees. So of course, that's that's best overall. In, in terms of individual earnings, mm. um, probably the skip bins does about the best. I know a lot of them make like quarter million dollars a year. I think trees do pretty well. Trees do well trees too, because really yeah, they're very, they're very high earning franchisees. The only thing about those, of course, is you, you can make a lot of money, but you need to be busy. So it, it's it's very important to get the work flowing through, and that's an issue because because you spend so much on equipment. Like the the, the trees guys have got these big shredders and yeah. stuff, and it's very expensive to go into, and um, skip bins obviously even more so. So they make very good money, but it's it's um, you, you have to be busy, you have to be good at what you're doing, you have to be promoting yourself actively. It depends what you do. I guess if you have some crews up as well, like in some of, let's say, like mining or cleaning or whatever the other ones are, you, you can make crews going. You can make in the millions yeah. of dollars a year with the right division. It's not. It's it's a strange thing. I was talking to a lady today about um, about that one one of the media people and just just saying that it's it's this great illusion that you need to be to to make money you need to be in tech and have some fancy mm -hmm. tech idea most successful people most wealthy people are actually more like me than they are like a tech entrepreneur they're people who who do a basic job like cleaning or gardening or fencing or something and, and just do it well and, and they build a great business and they employ people and and they and they you know don't spend too much because because spending takes all the money out and and that's 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 it's a it's a it's a wonderful opportunity I was saying that there are some new, uh, more office space division. Like we've got Jim's Finance that could do really well. Yeah. And, and the real estate guys, you have a gun real estate agent who could be making That's a, a lot one. of commission. That's, it's exciting too. Yeah, real estate and uh, computer services Just and bookkeeping. bookkeeping. Yeah. There's, there's some white collar divisions around, which is which is good because they appeal to a different demographic. That's true. People who wouldn't necessarily go out and build fences, but but they might want to be a bookkeeper, for example. Yeah. That's it. So here's one from Shane Charge from again. I'll get this one in there before we hopefully before we need to go. Is there an opportunity as a as a group to advertise for more franchisees nationally? I remember the Jimbo jingle caught everyone's attention. If that could be directed at the benefits of being a franchisee, we might be able to get some more franchisees. Yes, the trouble is things like widescreed TV don't we really don't work very well these days. In terms of, of positive leads per dollar. We're better off going with things like social media and AdWords and those kind of things. Social media in particular, using videos and stuff, is a is a low key way to very very cost effective. Mm. Out, this is one thing that uh, yeah, I think going on to this one, Shane, we're actually we're actually them. doing a bit of brand research at the moment, so mm. we'll be asking people about opinions of franchise and that sort of stuff. The problem is, it's all well and good doing advertising, but you need to know, make sure that it's hitting the right points. You know, running your jingle, that's okay, but um, you need to make sure it's hitting the right point. So we want to find out about the brand more in first, get those insights, then we can develop a creative and give you guys the creative to then push out to hopefully get more inquiries. Um, at a national level, it's a bit hard because we've got so many services, really. We've got to make sure that message resonates with mm. all these people who could be interested in more white-collar divisions or more 
let's say blue collar type things or but, something else. But we're advertising for a video person now. Aren't yeah, we? we are. So what we're doing, Shane, at the moment is we're, we're looking for a video content produce and sort of a bit of a social person integrating into one to do a lot more content where you can come into the office or when you're here next or whatever, we can film you as a franchise or then you can use it as a package and then push via your Facebook or your social mm. or any landing pages and stuff you want to do like that. So we're going to have a person internally for that to create a bunch of content to help you with that sort of stuff. Because content is great. It's good for social media, but it also helps your website to rank very well too. Yeah. Google likes useful content. So we'd like to become the advice place to go to if you want to know how to do something. Ask gyms. Now, it's, it's, it's an advice on how to do it yourself, but the gym's uniform and the gym's brand is there so that uh, this is a bit difficult, so let's get gym's handyman to do it or whatever. I suggest there's a lot of, there's a lot of content on the YouTube channel, uh, Shane. If you go to gym's uh, group and search it on YouTube, there's a lot of stuff about what a regional franchise is supposed to do. There's a lot of testimonials and stuff. Grab that type of content, put it into your Facebook advertising or whatever you're doing to um, try and drive some inquiries. It's free content. You can grab it from there, and I think it comes up pretty good. It's Jim himself talking about regional franchisors and there's testimonials mm. and that. So all that sort of stuff you can grab. Um, Ember's gone. I thought you would have might have mentioned Jim's blind cleaning and repairs as well. Great. Maybe. I don't know how much. It, they might be making millions of blind cleaning guys. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Um, it's it's a relatively new division, but it's 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 going quite well. And then, and Linda Cleary Willis has gone. Do you do podcasts? Um, we haven't done any. We don't do any pod. We haven't done podcasts, but you do interviews on podcasts if requested. Yeah, I've done quite a few. I've done yeah. like driving with an entrepreneur and a whole lot of other things like that. That done, but this is basically this guy. Well, Linda, so we've got one from Jim. Jim's on one done recently called Business Addicts. I know that's coming out late mm. March. Um, Jim's available to do podcasts, so if people has any podcasts, business podcasts or anything they want to interview Jim on. I know Jim's doing a lot of media now, so he's he was open to doing any podcasts. Yeah, and with that yeah. with that book that's come out, um, yeah. we've done we've got massive media exposure. Even my kids are hearing about it as well. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good indicator that you're getting out there. So um, with the podcast, we'd love to do a um, a Jim's podcast, but I don't know. We'd probably run out of stuff to say. I guess it'd be maybe an interesting thing. I don't know if you want to flip yeah. through some suggestions or. Yeah, well, Let us know if you'd like one. I don't know. This is a good format because people ask me questions about all, all sorts of things, so it's not not difficult to find something to say. I have opinions on everything. Yeah, yeah. But like the live video format's probably a bit easier too, Lindy, because it's a lot easier. It's a lot quicker for us to do um, with podcasts. You obviously have to produce and all sort of stuff. So Joel Montgomery's gone. Good evening. So hello, Joel. And then Michelle Knudsen has gone. Thank you. We love our Jim's Mind business. Thank you for that, Michelle. And we are running out of time, so I've got one more question here before I have to let Jim go, and it'll be from Alana Sadowski via Facebook. She went, some franchisees have asked, can the new book be downloaded to their Amazon Kindle? So the new Jim's book, can that, is that available on Amazon Kindle? Uh, I'm told it will happen in the future, but not yet. On the Kindle? I had a look, you actually can. So the audio book's not available yet, but the Kindle version you can get. Which, which, so you're talking about Jim's book? Jim's book? Yeah. Oh, it's available on Kindle? Yeah, it's available on Kindle. Oh, good, yeah. good, good. That's good. So the answer to that one is yes, the Jim's book is available on Kindle. But not, um, not the audio book yet. Not the audio book yet, no. We're, and, we're doing an audio version yes, of this one. This book. Yes. Which will be available very soon. That'll be free. Yes, that'll be free. So you can get that from the website, and that should be coming back in the next week or two. Um, we've been talking from the guys. and. It's a really well, a nice, good audio book. All so. right. I think my wife is ringing me to try and get me to come for dinner, which is what the phone's got. Yes. Oh. We've kept him for very long. We're supposed to be there for half an hour, but the questions and comments come through, and we try to get to as many as we can. Um, and thank you for taking the time to tune in. And um, hopefully if there's All enough right. interest, we'll do it again next we'll week. see you next week. No worries. Okay. See you guys.